So this is me, Ruben Tejero. It's pretty difficult to pronounce as well for Spaniards. Uh, uh, yeah, I like to, you know, to name myself as a networker, so I connect people together. I really enjoy coming to these conferences, meeting people, interacting with them, and they're just doing the introductions and look the, how these connections work. And that's my Twitter handle, uh, probably my handle everywhere, R Tejero. It's easy to... So I come from Spain, mostly live in Sevilla, in the southern part of Spain. Then I moved to Sweden for five years, been working in Ericsson and another big company, working in really interesting projects, everything related to Drupal. And then I moved back to Spain, but now to the south, uh, to the beach, much better, in Conil. So I work uh, for One X Internet. It's a German company located in Frankfurt. And now we open an office in, in Conil. So we are five people. And of course, we are hiring. So if you're interested to live in the southern Spain, just uh, having an office in front of the beach, uh, feel free to catch me in the corridors, OK? <laughs> and this is a picture from the coolest uh, Drupal Kang ever. That was in Reykjavik in February. Seriously, that was cool, OK? <laughs> but cool in the way of uh, cold, freezing cold. Okay. <laughs> so I'm running this uh, initiative, uh, Drupal Heroes. I have uh, stickers as well, if you want. Uh, I brought a bag of stickers uh, the, from Drupal Heroes. Feel free to catch me and ask me as well. Let's go to the meet. Uh, so as you can see, front-end is uh, moving faster than, the, than other technologies. Uh, that probably that's something that you notice. I mean, a lot of people is doing JavaScript nowadays. And even, I guess, it's something that probably everybody that wants to get started into web development, they start with JavaScript because it's more or less the easiest way to understand a programming language. And also, you notice because of the JavaScript frameworks that are in the market. I guess there is a list of words uh, with uh, JavaScript frameworks, and probably it's uh, almost all the English dictionary, like beer, JS, cupcake, JS, you know, these kind of stupid things. They already exist as J uh, JavaScript frameworks. So what happened with the, with the web uh, applications? Uh, uh, in, so I've been working in, uh, in web development almost 15 years. And uh, this is how we started in uh, building monolithic applications. That means that when you have a website for a company, you're working for a customer, you're building their website, and they say, yeah, now we need a blog. Then you put the blog functionality in the same website. And now they come with another requirement, like, oh, we want an online store as well. Ah, you put all the, the code and everything on the same code base. Oh, but we also want to have an integration, or not integration, sorry, to have a CRM, you know, a customer relationship management system. Or, oh, we want this or this. So we end up putting all the code there. So more or less graphical, sorry for the clicker, or this. So this is a graphical representation of the project, OK? After a while, after a, a couple of iterations. You been there? Yes, no? Yeah, I've been there several times. So what is the uh, solution? <laughs> it's uh, microservices. Uh, microservices architecture, more or less, uh, is uh, they separate functionalities in different applications, and what they do is integrations together. OK, let's say that you have a blog, or you have a CRM, or a, the online uh, store. And what you do is have different applications, and they communicate together. Let's say that you have a single sign-on, so you go logging in one application, and you are automatically logging in the other. So these kind of things, that they are super useful for the, for the users, but also they are really good for the developers. Let's say that your uh, CRM goes down not the whole application goes down. Only the CRM is down. The rest of the applications are up and running. This is one of the samples of the benefits of uh, separating the functionalities using this kind of microservices architecture. So still, uh, so we are almost there. But what is the future? So what happened with the web applications? Because now we are living in the 
21st century, but this is uh, like an internet revolution, or it's uh, really, in, let's say, technology revolution. So for example, we have uh, mobile web apps. So you can see that everybody is uh, using mobile. And uh, all, the, all the websites, or all the web applications should be uh, tailored to working a mobile device. But not only that. Let's say that you have a, a device that doesn't have a browser, like, for example, an Apple Watch. Not that Apple Watch, another one. Uh, is there anyone with an Apple Watch here? Yes? Uh, which browser do you have in the Apple Watch? No browser. So if you want to open a, a Drupal website in, the, in your watch, how do you do that? No way? Yeah, there is way. I mean, it's headless. <laughs> yes? So the idea is uh, to uh, change the way that you are uh, you know, uh, requesting websites. Okay? So you don't really need to load the website and all the markup and everything in a browser. You only need the content. And then you just uh, uh, tailor the content to the device, the screen, or even, let's say, um, devices with no screen at all. Let's say, you know, sensors, uh, beacons, or uh, different devices, like in the pre presentation that we have uh, in the keynote. So for example, Alexa. Alexa doesn't have any interface. Uh, it's just a uh, voice and, uh, and speaker, uh, but no, no mouse, no keyboard, no screen. This clicker is so bad. Come on. Come on. OK, now it's broken. So what's Drupal doing for, uh, you know, to catch up with this new technology trends and uh, this new uh, paradigm or building uh, web applications? Come on. It's running out of battery or something. OK, stop clicker. So just quickly, uh, benefits of Drupal is the loosely coupled architecture. So we rebuild the code base, actually not complete, but almost 70%. Uh, using Symfony components, that means that you can separate functionalities easily and plug in new, compo uh, new components built by the Symfony uh, community or even by other PHP communities. So probably. As, as I visualize the future, it's like all the PHP communities are going to unify. Um, instead, having a logging interface or logging component for Drupal, another for WordPress or Magento or other PHP frameworks, probably in the future we will have one logging uh, component uh, for all the PHP you know, frameworks. And then it's easy to maintain. All the communities can support, you know, bug fixes, security issues. So this is how I visualize the future. Also, uh, the, uh, there is a modern uh, front end with Twig uh, that allows a better way of uh, developing uh, front end interfaces for non experience uh, so developers with no experience in Drupal. So it's much easier to, for a developer to join a Drupal team with, with, uh, with Twig. Uh, it's much easier to understand. It's cleaner and it's, it's also more secure. So it's, there is no way to allow PHP or even MySQL query using a template, you know, that those things that you have seen during, you know, this past, uh, you know, eight years in Drupal 6, 7, or even 5. So we have dynamic page cache that allows to, you know, to do a cache by context, and by context means by user role, user location, by, you know, content type, or, you know, and you can invalidate not the whole page, you can invalidate portions of the page. So this is pretty good. Uh, we have also big pipe that is like a lazy load, uh, you know, parts of the page. So that means that the page loads and the, these components that there, or these blocks, or, uh, uh, or, um, or parts of the, your web that they're not completely loaded because they are waiting for a web service to uh, return some values or something, the page is loaded. More or less uh, the same that you can see in Facebook because actually this uh, technology was brought by, the idea was brought by, from Facebook. We have a lot of UX improvements. Uh, 
One of the downsides of Drupal is it's really difficult to use, not uh, for users. Uh, so what we are doing is actually improving a lot the UX. Um, to improve the UX, we really need to move forward in uh, front -end, the front-end technologies that we are using. The same for accessibility, so we, make, we need to make the web for everyone and people with any kind of disabilities. So uh, that's, uh, there is an initiative as well in Drupal working actively in, in improving the accessibility. The same for the multilingual. So uh, nowadays we are multilingual. So here we are in Holland in, and we are speaking English. Uh, so the idea is, uh, yeah, almost all the websites will be multilingual in the future. And also security. Remember last week uh, the Drupal Gedon 2, version 2? Uh, we have a, for those that you don't know, uh, we have a really big, uh, let's say, highly critical security issue that was reported by the Drupal security team. And uh, it looks like uh, it was like a worldwide collaboration between, you know, the security team and also the companies that uh, had to patch the like hundreds of websites. So at least in uh, one X, we've been till 2, 3 a.m. patching 200 uh, websites. It was a little bit painful, but it was really good and synchronized with the, with the security team. So they released the patch, and then we just immediately started to patch all the websites. So this is another really big feature in Drupal. And also the best one is Drupal is becoming an API first. Uh, CMS or framework or, or whatever you want to call it. So in this case, what it does it mean is that we want to provide all the components or all the content uh, stored in Drupal through an API. So I guess you know that Drupal more or less is, has two kind of entities, configuration entities and content entities. Both are fully exportable as a JSON or you know, other like a, a standard format. So they can be consumed by uh, third party applications. So now Drupal is uh, on this way, on this path, uh, and it's going to become the API first uh, CMS. So let's go to headless. Uh, I really like to, you know, to call this uh, headless, but uh, there is uh, now a controversy, a discussion about that headless is not the proper term for the couple applications. But I really like the logo, so I don't remember who did the logo design, but, uh, but I really like it. But uh, the proper name uh, that the experts said is uh, the coupling. Uh, the coupling is just separation, okay? There, is, uh, there are different ways to decouple the applications. In this case, the easiest one is uh, the couple, let's say, the front end. So the couple, the interface that the um, visitors are going to see. So in this case, it's really easy because what you do is just consume the content, just read it and present it in a good way. You are not doing any other updates, deletes, or creation of content uh, with, this, uh, with this approach. Second. Mm -hmm. One of the samples, I always use this, uh, this picture, is the Tesla uh, panel. Uh, some people say that this is uh, based in Drupal. Some people say that there is no proof about that. So I'm still, present, uh, I'm still showing the same picture. If someone in the room can say yes or no, because there is no confirmation yet. But the, uh, the only thing that we know is that the Tesla Motors website is built in Drupal 8. That's the only thing. But this is a good example of uh, a good uh, uh, application, le let's say, for for a car, you can just build a good application that can be visualized in the panel, you know, and for people just to, let's say, uh, locate the next gas station, you know, if you are in the car in a traffic jam, then probably you can even do your shopping or something, you know, from the panel. So there are a lot of uh, good opportunities to build uh, applications, like the couple applications for this device. This. Uh, this is actually confirmed. So I was in Drupalaton in, uh, in Hungary, uh, and 
uh, I was talking with the project manager of uh, the Lufthansa uh, in-flight uh, multimedia entertainment system. So is the, they are working actively in the project. Actually, this is a, a job offer. I, they're actually hiring as well uh, for building the so, so, so maintaining and, and finishing the building of the application. And this is the when you are in a in a plane, a Lufthansa plane. This is this uh, screen thingy that you can just see um, um, read magazines, view uh, series or videos, movies. So uh, this is built in in Drupal 8. Is they're using a decapital architecture to to visualize the you know the magazines and everything is more interactive. And on the other hand, you can decouple the editorial, I call it the editorial UI, or the admin interface, or this, uh, let's say, or the backend, uh, some people call it backend. Uh, so th it's this part where you interact with the content, let's say that you edit it, update it, create or delete, you know. So those are one of the big examples is what WordPress did uh, with Calypso, and it's a, uh, uh, they built uh, like a, the Word, WordPress admin interface. They rebuilt it using React. And uh, after that, uh, a lot of people started to think about uh, if we can do the same in, in Drupal. And it's possible, you know, uh, regarding uh, if uh, the API is ready. Probably it's not 100% uh, ready, but it's uh, almost there. There are a few uh, things that are, uh, you know, blockers, but uh, almost the full API is, is ready. So this is an example of uh, the couple application that we built in One X in the past months. So now I took the, the reins of the project to, uh, to move it to the next uh, level. So in this case, it's just a, it's just a, um, a front-end application built in React uh, using the JSON API uh, module uh, in Drupal 8. And what it offers is an in-place editing experience. That means that you can just create an, uh, the content and edit it, just clicking and typing, more or less the same like you do it in Medium or in other these uh, cool services that are out, out there. So there is no latency. You don't need to just click Save, and then you have a page reload. And uh, you have uh, the feeling that, that you are just uh, yeah, you know, tailoring the content and the, the look and feel immediately, you see the preview, so you don't really need to do anything else. Just click and save. I will show you them later, so no problem. So the only, the only downsides uh, of this approach are as usual. When you are editing something and someone is editing the same thing, then you need to block the content because you don't know which one is going to be the, you know, the latest update. So those are the... the the drawbacks that we are trying to, to solve right now. This is an example a screenshot of the application. You can see the edit button, these orange buttons. Then you click there, and then you are able to edit that part. And in the left uh, sidebar, then you can select uh, which pages. Um, and you can see now the now I'm editing this part, and then you can see the, that the, you can load the properties in the left sidebar. You load the properties of the element that you are uh, editing, and you can just change the color or something like that. As I said, I will show you a demo later. So where are we going uh, with, uh, with this decouple you know, uh, trend? So it's interesting because, as I say, the, the technologies are changing, devices are changing, and actually we are changing. So we are humans are demanding different ways of interacting with the devices. And also, uh, you know, it's not only in the social media that we are also demanding different ways of, uh, you know, interacting with the social media. So uh, it's uh, right now the the... the the world is open to new, new ideas. And it looks like uh, people is taking it seriously. So let me show you uh, like uh, accessible, I call it accessible solutions. We already have seen a video this morning, I guess, uh, in the keynote about Alexa. Uh, 
we have a little bit of time, so I will show you the video if you don't mind. It's a presentation that I have it here. I don't know if I have, uh, do we have a, uh, nope. Do we have audio? No. Nope. No. Ooh. Okay. I can tell you what is happening there. So it's uh, an initiative from uh, Georgia government. So what the, what is this? Mm -hmm. Interesting. So this is not uh, jumping into the, okay. <laughs> can I drop this someone else? What is this? Mm -hmm. Why well, you can see this? Uh huh, got it. Perfect. Easy, easy. You have it there? Perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry for this mess. Okay. So what is happening here is uh, she's telling Alexa, uh, as I say, this is from the Georgia government. So she's asking Alexa how she can pay a fine, uh, you know, a traffic, a, a traffic fine. Uh, so uh, Alexa is uh, requesting, so doing a request to the, to the Georgia.gov uh, website where they have a, like a knowledge database of you know uh, questions and answers, and um, what he's doing is just uh, answering with the with the right uh, place where to find the information. So let me go to the next one. So this is gonna be a mess. Ah, uh, uh, no. Actually, this is going to be boring because it's, uh, this, we don't have... Uh, okay. Anyway, I'm going to explain more or less what is this one. This is regarding a chatbot. And uh, this, the idea is more or less uh, asking uh, you know, questions in the chatbot. And what you have access is to even buy items or uh, you know get get uh, get information from the from the application so this is another way to decouple uh, an application connecting to a to a drupal backend and completely changing your your front end so i leave you to just uh, read what is happening The module for the chatbot is uh, ready as well, as well for Alexa. In the presentation, you have the links. Uh, you can see there that they have an option. And all that, all that responses are in the, in the Drupal backend already, you know, uh, let's say mapped with uh, these specific questions. This is the correct answer. This is how that chatbot works, you know. If you have a artificial intelligence or you have a machine learning algorithm uh, learning from the questions and which answer is the more accurate, then probably the chatbot will be more intelligent. But right now it's kind of like, uh, you know, this question has this answer, that, that's all. So let me go back to the presentation. I will show you a little bit of more videos later. Oh, where's my... Here, good. Crap. Okay, let me go to the presentation. Good. It works? Good. So, uh, this morning, I have seen the keynote. I have seen this uh, as well, the same demo, you know, with uh, with Alexa and a shopping 
uh, or an on online store. So it was really good to see a, a, a actual, an actual demo as well, uh, and, and something that is pretty, pretty much uh, festival nowadays, you know, and something that people actually are going to use, like buying with Alexa or with other, you know, devices. So a little bit more, as I said, the chatbots, uh, they're becoming more popular because people really like to chat. And now chats are getting even more, you know, so with these integrations, they even provide a, a wallet that you can do payments or send money to other uh, participants in the chat. So and you can, as you can see, Slack is, uh, is really getting really popular into the companies. And, uh, Uh, so what's the approach? Uh, because right now is uh, the people don't know how to start with uh, the couple uh, project. Uh, they feel that they want to decouple, let's say, everything. Let's say decouple the, the front-end interface and also decouple the, the back-end. But my suggestion is to go uh, slowly. I mean, uh, try to just decouple or separate the parts that you are more concerned about. For example, if you really need a neat interface that with the uh, current uh, f Drupal uh, front-end uh, tools uh, you're not able to do. So in this case, just try to you know, build your own interface in the framework that, that you feel more comfortable with. So we are not, uh, there is a trend now, people using React, but uh, in the end, it's up to you which framework you use. Uh, the one that you feel more comfortable or the one that your team knows better, uh, that, that's, the, that's the idea. As I said, we are using standards, and with the JSON API uh, module, you can always you know, uh, tailor your uh, JSON uh, data into the, you know, following the schema that you prefer. So just start doing uh, small, small applications, and as long as you become better, more familiar with uh, how this works, then you can just go further and just decouple, as I said, decouple the editorial interface so you can allow people to create content, manipulate content in a, in a really good way. So don't try to go all in. In the beginning, you don't have experience. So I'm going to explain a little bit which in Drupal initiatives you have out there so where you can just find information, support from the initiative leads, and uh, more cool stuff. So the first one is the API first initiative. This is how everything started. So we have seen a trend in the market where, you know, uh, frameworks, or, or sorry, CMSs are becoming more a framework. And in this case, uh, like an API first framework, it looks like the market, the market is demanding. And as I said, uh, the links uh, are going to be accessible uh, when I upload the, the, the presentation. So the API first initiative is uh, leading by uh, Bean Lears uh, and, and Mateo and also Daniel Wiener. So there are, there are a lot of people, really good people working there. The JSON API uh, module, uh, this uh, actually solves one of the important problems that we have in core. That was the REST, uh, the REST module that comes in uh, uh, with Drupal core uh, is not uh, exporting the data in a, let's say, standard JSON format. So you can export it in both JSON or HAL uh, format, but it looks like people is not happy. It's a little bit uh, clumsy, and uh, it's really difficult to override. So that's why uh, the JSON API module uh, was born. What it does is just allows you to just uh, manipulate the JSON data in, and offer the structure that you really need for your application. So instead, you know, trying to hack your application to adapt to the, what Drupal is, uh, you know, exposing as a JSON, it's better to, you know, offer the, the, or, uh, offer the, the, the JSON in a proper standard format. 
this uh, Mateo is a guy from Mallorca. Is the one of the guys leading the JSON API uh, module, and he's a good friend. He's a good guy. Uh, some tools that will make really, really, really easy for you to get started are uh, looks, uh, tools like Reservoir, that is a framework or SDK uh, to build uh, the couple applications. Uh, I don't remember if this is uh, based in React. I'm 90% sure that it's in React, but I had to double check it. Bin Lears is the, is the one the leading it. Uh, sorry, this uh, reservoir is a distribution of Drupal, you know, that is already tailored to do the couple applications, Re reservoir. Then we have a uh, GraphQL. Uh, I didn't talk about GraphQL before. Uh, it's another technology that we took from Facebook. What it offers is like an easy way to query data in your uh, backend. And you use like a, a really easy naming and really, really easy way of discovering uh, how your data is structured. So you can just start, you know, you know, uh, querying uh, products, and then immediately you find more. Uh, uh, let's say sub uh, items or sub entities that you can query. Let's say from this object, I want to see with, in which colors this is uh, this product is available. So it was with just with a, a couple of lines, you can just query the database with this kind of things. Uh, if I have time, I will show you later the the demo that is in the bottom. This the Star Wars API. This is pretty pretty interesting. And Fubi, uh, Sebastian, uh, is the one leading this uh, initiative. Actually, we are convincing Sebastian, that is in Thailand now, I guess, to come to Spain for a couple of weeks to, you know, to help us to integrate the GraphQL into our, uh, our application. So do uh, like a um, double, let's say, use JSON API. You know, for the data and use GraphQL to query the data. So that's uh, the best. Uh, I guess this is something that we consider that is one of the best options. You know, to scale up the application. So still, Sebastian is not uh, convinced, but uh, I will try harder. Um, yeah, one of the initiatives that started a long time ago and then it became like, like let's say that is spread apart and it became like the basis for what we have uh, nowadays is the workflow initiative. So the workflow initiative, what it uh, stands for is for having different uh, environments in your own Drupal installation. Let's say that you have a development, staging, or test, and a live, uh, you know, uh, environments. So you can reproduce exactly the same in your single uh, Drupal installation. But uh, what you have, uh, in, in, in the difference is the content. No, the code base, not the configuration is the, co the content. So you can have content that is in development environment, and you can just push that content to live, for example, or, you know, to test. Not only in the single application, but also cross applications. You can just push into another uh, Drupal installation. You can push content. So this started this way. That was the initial idea. And then it became a Drupal Deploy. Uh, like a Drupal Deploy is a subset of uh, Drupal modules that help with this uh, content uh, wor workflow uh, or content uh, deployment. And uh, one of those modules, or one or two, I guess it was uh, deploy, uh, no, relaxed web services, and uh, multi-version. I guess both they became uh, part of uh, Drupal core. So the responsible of this initiative is Dick, Dick Olson. He's a good guy from Sweden that is living in UK now, working in Pfizer. And uh, yeah, he built this relaxed web services uh, module. What it does is, uh, let's say that it uh, manipulates Drupal in a way that it's, it's, it works or it acts as a, a CouchDB database. 
That means that you can just uh, treat uh, Drupal as a CouchDB database, and you can just create applications on top of that. It's pretty useful when you want to uh, do real-time, uh, you know, uh, access to real-time information. So this works really faster than the MySQL. Um, uh, it's really good. I have seen a couple of demos of people doing really crazy things with this. And actually, Relax uh, Web Services works much better than the actual uh, REST module in core. I don't know what is going to happen in the future. They are going to merge the initiatives. So I had to dig a little bit more on that. Another SDK that this, it was a little bit stuck for a while. But I've been talking with uh, Preston. Uh, about it, and they are going to release uh, new functionalities. So what is Waterwheel is a SDK for iOS, uh, for, uh, for JavaScript uh, frameworks to get started uh, into building uh, applications, the couple applications. Uh, do you have the links there? I guess you notice that I'm posting a lot of stuff about Akia, so I don't have anything to do with Akia, but the idea is they are the ones leading these initiatives, or, or more or less leading them, and they're ones that are building more proof of concepts, so, you know, and showing a lot of uh, materials, you know? So that's the only reason, because, you know. Um, Preston is coming to Drupal Camp Spain as well, so I, I convinced him to come to, uh, to be a keynote speaker. So he's coming to Spain, and you should come as well if you can. It's in May in Alicante, and it's really good. It's by the beach. Another cool thing uh, is getting there. The idea is uh, uh, until we have a full support of, uh, from the browsers to progressive web applications and service workers. So they, I guess they, we won't see more. Uh, but as long as the brow all the browsers or the common browsers have support to service workers and this uh, technology, so probably we will see more stuff. So note that is uh, Theodore Biadala. That is a French guy, he's a really, really good friend, uh, working now for OVH in, in France. He started with uh, progressive web applications, and, uh, and more people uh, tried to, to, to do some proof of concept about it. I guess it was in Drupal Camp Belgium. They did their application as well using progressive web apps. That means that we, when you go offline, when in a place where you don't have Wi-Fi, you can still use the website because it's a store in your, in your browser, and you can even interact uh, with, the, with the website. And when you get uh, you know, your internet back, then the application just finished the, whatever you were doing. It's good when you are purchasing something. So the, the possibilities are endless. But the, the idea is uh, we need support from the, from the browsers. Um, yeah. So what are the market trends? So where, where we can, let's say, monetize these ideas, or even uh, where we can focus or, or uh, strength or, uh, or, or energy uh, to build, let's say, products. Because for me, in, in the end, I guess it's more beneficial to build a product than to build just a, a project for a customer. I guess if we create generic uh, solutions that they are useful for different customers, that means that you can get a lot of chances to, you know, to build something cool. I mean, if you just build a, a project just for one customer, it's just useful for that customer. But if you just generalize a little bit the solution, probably it's useful for this customer, for this one, and for this one. So in this case, I have seen a trend in the, in the market in this kind of products. One of, this is the, one of them is the content repositories. That means that you have a platform where you have your content, all your content, and you just push the content to other third-party platforms. That minimizes the, you know, the time that the editors spend in the platform, so they can just focus only on creating content in that platform. And then, they say, the publishers, they search for a specific content and they push it, or they share it in social media channels or whatever. So this is a good idea. I just started with it, and I have seen uh, other people that they are building as well this kind of, uh, of products. The other digital assets management is more or less the same like, like a content hub, but instead managing content is managing uh, images, uh, videos, and other multimedia content, like uh, audios and everything. 
That's another thing, and this is also this can be also fully integrated with the content hub, and then you have a product out there that is, I, mean, I guess, is is uh, it has a lot of chances to 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 be successful. I guess probably you have seen this before, Contentful. They did a pretty big uh, marketing campaign almost one year ago, something like that. So what is Contentful? It's an API-first uh, CMS. Uh, it's a proprietary, it's not uh, open source, but this is one example of people just making business uh, you know, on top of you know, this kind of uh, approaches. So in this case, uh, they, as I said, they did a big campaign. And uh, yeah, and I have seen big companies using it. Okay, so so there is there are a lot of chances that they can use other solutions uh, if they are open source. For example, Directus is an open source API first CMS. It's built in Symfony, or Symfony or Laravel, the same. Uh, as I said, it's a, it's a, um, it's open source, and they consider like a headless CMS. Kind of fine, uh, but we have as well our own <laughs> uh, headless CMS. Uh, it's called Contenta CMS. I really like the the name. I really like the logo, and it's a API first Drupal distribution, kinda the similar like a reservoir. But I guess uh, with Contenta, what we, they are doing is creating good practices, and they are showing examples with Angular, with React. So if you go to the repository. You will find a lot of code samples about how to connect uh, any JavaScript framework, probably, with the Contenta CMS. And they have a really e quick and easy installation. And you know, um, more or less, the, the, the presentation is, is really good. They are taking care of the, this as well. So people behind it uh, is uh, just a fish. It's uh, Sally. Uh, it's uh, Daniel Wiener and, uh, and Mateo, uh, Mateo Aguilo. At least these three guys are uh, working actively. You are welcome if you want to bring some ideas. OK, so now it's time to demo. I don't know how it's going to work the demo, but let me check it out. I have time. Yes, good. So oh, this is running. What the hell? Let me close this. Uh, I had another video. Probably you are tired of videos. This was about beacons in an airport, so like sensors in an airport, and then they send uh, information to your mobile, wherever you are, if you are close to your the baggage claim area or whatever. But I, I will leave this there uh, because you can just watch it. They're all, they're all in, the same, uh, in the same YouTube channel. So no more videos. OK, let me split. If not, I'm going to break my neck. So let me mirror the screens, if I can do that. Uh -huh. so let me know if you can see this properly. Yes? It's good enough? Mm. I'm going to show you, this is the back end of the application, and this is the front end, OK? So quickly, show you in the back end what we, really, what, what we have is uh, content uh, built using paragraphs. Uh, does anyone in the room know the paragraphs module? Yes, perfect. So uh, as you notice, uh, Paragraphs is one of those modules that they are changing the, uh, the, the game, OK? And they are changing the mindset when you build an application. Because Paragraphs is really you know, making the editorial experience much better. So you can see that uh, this is the page, and you can see the sections. So you have an introduction, like a welcome, and this is blah, blah, blah. So this is a paragraph. If I edit it, uh, so you can see here is the message. Then I can go here. I can go here. Then if I want to 
you know, remove the image. I can do it here, and then I have some, you know, options, configuration options, and blah, blah, blah. So you can see, more or less, the editorial experience is a little bit better. Let's call it a little bit better, you know? But it's powerful, because you can just really customize a lot of things, you know? You can rearrange, uh, you know, uh, parts of the page. You know, can, you can move it around. In this case, if you want to move the, the sections, you can drag and drop. So this is quite good, OK? But why, what if we go to the next level and we can do exactly the same, but without interacting with this ugly interface? So, so this is the demo. Let me go to the front. So this is exactly the same welcome page that I show you in the back end, OK? But instead, going to the paragraph, exactly the section of the paragraph, uh, you just go and click. Let's say you want to edit this part. You just click here, and then you just edit here. So this is Drupal Jam. 2018, and just press Save, and it's done. So what, it, what this does in the, so like logically, is uh, accessing the a specific entity, because every paragraph is an entity, and it's just uh, you know, uh, storing the, uh, the data that you are, so the content that you are uh, typing is uh, storing it in the, in the local storage in the browser. And automatically, when you press Save, uh, triggers the update to that specific entity. So you don't really need to load uh, everything, all the whole page or everything. In this case, it's just updating the specific part. The same, you want to modify this accordion module, then I can rearrange the, you can rearrange the, the items. Uh, they, they look the same, so you, you won't notice this. I can add a new item here. I can edit this one. This is the one. Let me add the second. And this is the third. And as I said, uh, you can just, uh, sorry, here. You can just move them around and put the third first easily without, uh, you know, uh, this crazy drag and drop thing. Because uh, paragraphs is really good, but as long as you are nesting a lot of paragraphs, this can be really crazy. So I show you exactly the accordion here. So let me refresh so you can see that the slim link has been updated in the back end. If someone gets lost or you want me to do the, the font a little bit bigger, just raise your hand, because this is demo time. We have still five minutes, or three, four, yes? So you can just stop me, and you can tell me, Ruben, show me more of this, more of that, because more or less we will uh, get into you know, the questions time. So as I said, I show you uh, how it will look like to edit the accordion in the back end. So this is the accordion module, and accordion module, uh, edit in the back end. And then you have the items here, you know, and then you can just drag and drop, and you can edit them here. You know, but you can see that it's a little bit you know, clumsy. Okay, I edited both, and then when you press Save, it takes a while because it's saving uh, the whole page. Okay? Now I come here. One of the things is this should update regularly, you know, if I do any changes. But in this case, I had to reload. But the, the good thing is with React, you have a, a com web components that they can be automatically updated when the, the data has changed. You can see this one and this one, OK? So to add, a new st to add some new stuff, uh, you can just uh, add it here, you know? Let's say that I want to add an accordion. OK, let's add something else. Let's add a slider. 
You can just add the slider module there. Also, you can add, a, let's say, teasers. Let me save this. Slider module, add Drupal, jump. And uh, edit the item. And you can see, you can edit the items there. And the item can be an image. Yes, and I can do this, this. If you want to see more, uh, I'm going to be around. So we can just sit down and I can show you more, OK? If you want to see the code, uh, OK? I'm open to any other questions. Let me go back to the presentation. I guess I don't have anything else in there. Probably, yeah. yeah. Some, can you see this? Yeah. I uh, will share more links here. Uh, more headless Drupal today, a part of the keynote that I really enjoyed. We have uh, this highly interactive, highly reliable single page web application in TypeScript and React using headless Drupal by Giuseppe Maggiore. is here in the, the room. It's at 2 p.m. I, I suggest that you you want to know more about Helles. And introduction to GraphQL by Maurits Lavende. It's here in the room. No. Nope. And this is a three. So more Helles. Looks like uh, today we are going to have a lot of Helles. Another thing, CJ Fronting United. Uh, we will have a whole week in Fronting United where we are going to focus in not only front-end and not only Drupal front-end, but we are going to focus in the couple applications headless all week. And the people of uh, organizing Fronting United are here. You can, uh, you can differentiate them. They are wearing the, this green hoodies. And uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me or you can ask them, OK? I will be there, and I, you are more than welcome to join us. We have a co-working space where we are going to be sprinting and working in the, this kind of cool stuff. Part of that, we are going to you know, network, you know, have some coffee together, and we have a lot of time to, to, to discuss these things. And I'm going to be back in Utrecht again. Uh, come to Drupal Europe because we are going to have a track for this uh, editorial experiences and headless. Uh, time for questions is gone, I guess, but you can just catch me in the corridors with a coffee and then we can just discuss a little bit. And thank you. Thank you, Ruben. Uh, I'd like to invite you all for lunch. At 2 o'clock, we'll be back. So in load 6 and 7, there's lots of food waiting for you. And thank you very much for introducing the other ones. <laughs> <laughs>